Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. I uh, hope I'm not squinting too bad. It's really bright out here today. Um, today's video is video three on the chicken coop build. I'm getting really close to being done, um, but there will be a fourth video. My files on my laptop are just getting too big. I need to cut it off here and, and uh, make another video. So let's get into this phase of building the chicken coop. Okay, first I'm going to show you how I built this door and these two windows. Okay, here you can see me mounting the chicken roost bars. Uh, for these roost bars, I just use standard 1x3s that you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, any big box store. And then I just, as you can see, built the little brackets to, to secure the roost bars. Okay, I've finished putting together the... Uh, deep litter door that will go along the back side of the chicken coop that will open up when I want to clean everything out into a wheelbarrow. Um, the, the length on this is 88 and 3 quarters inches long including both end boards. Um, so these two 2x4s two here are 81 and 7 8 each and then these interior boards here are 5 inches each. Um, if you look at the back here, I just trimmed a piece of plywood and uh, screwed it onto the back. And now I've got uh, tape, masking tape down because I'm going to paint all of this navy. And then once, I, once that is mostly dry, I'll peel off all of the tape and uh, let it finish drying. And once it's finished drying, I'll tape inside here and paint the inside white. Okay, I just kind of want to show you where everything is at now. Um, as you can see, I uh, just trimmed some one by twos and cut them at a 45 degree angle, painted them, and then screwed them from the inside uh, there around the door. And the, so there's two windows there. Okay, if you can see this, I've got the, the door on now. Works pretty well. Still haven't put any dividers in there. I'm kind of debating. I'm not sure if I'm going to. I probably will, but I'm not sure right now. You can see I painted the uh, floor and I also painted the, the walls just up 12 inches. That's just to 
kind of protect the wood from uh, the the bedding and then you can see I put in the roost bars oh and I also I also put in windows just like I did just they're just like those two windows only a little bigger on both sides okay on the table in front of me I have 21 8 foot long 2 by 4s uh, all but five of them will be the posts in the chicken coop run they'll all be cut at 65 inches the remaining five will be the top boards that go along the top of those posts. The one at the end I won't have to cut because it needs to be eight foot long. The other two will be 65 and 15 sixteenths. In other words, just a hair less than uh, 66 inches long. So I got some work to do. Okay, as you can see, I just finished framing out the run. It all went together really, really nice. I, it all looks straight. Anyway, I feel pretty good about it. Now I'm gonna start on uh, building out the roof. Okay, I just wanted to talk really briefly about uh, determining how steep you want your roof and how and how to uh, figure out the length and and the angles and so forth on build, building and cutting out your trusses. Um, quick disclaimer, I'm no expert. This is my first time doing it and I'm learning it by watching a bunch of YouTube videos. And I'm gonna link those videos below this description that I've been watching so you go, can go through and watch professional carpenters teach you how to, to calculate a roof. I'm gonna tell you the basics here, and then I'm gonna point out a simple, a couple of simple stupid mistakes that I made. Um, your goal when you're designing this is to cut one correctly. Um, and then what I wanted to do, actually wanted to cut two correctly, and then uh, fasten them together like, like they're supposed to be, and then put them on, and then put them on your structure and make sure that that they fit like they're supposed to that when they're sitting on the on the walls of your building that this angle fits tight up against the side and square on the flat on the on the top of the two by four that it's sitting on and um, on both sides that it's you know that it's the right distance anyway I, I've got two of them now and put them together and they fit perfectly on there so now I've got these and I can use them as a pattern so first I want to talk about a couple of basics um, you got to want to determine how steep you want your roof they call that the pitch um, I'm copying my uh, coop off of Carolina coops but I'm kind of specifically uh, following lazy lab acres and the way he's on his YouTube channel the way he built his coop and he on his roof he says he did a 512 pitch and what a 512 pitch means is for um, uh, like my width of my structure is eight feet so I know the truss is going to be 48 it's going to cover half of that distance which is 48 inches and so um, what a 512 pitch is is for every 12 inches horizontally that you go how far does it rise and a 512 pitch for every 12 inches it rises five inches so um, to calculate uh, my rise um, I know that it's going to go 48 inches because that's four feet and uh, four times and it's so it's going to rise five inches four times so four times five is 20 um, and then there's a so that that tells you if you know your pitch you can calculate you know the, the height because you need to know the horizontal uh, length um, in my case 48 inches uh, that your truss is going to cover and then and then how far it rises to calculate the length of your truss um, and and knowing the the pitch obviously helps in that so there's a theorem and I never can say the name of the theorem correctly it's a simple 
uh, geometry uh, formula. It's called the, I'd have to see it spelled and sounded out. It's something like the Pelagotherium theorem or something like that. Um, anyway, in those videos, they talk about it as well. But basically with that, if you know this measurement and this measurement, you can calculate this measurement. And so it, when I put my 48 inches and 20, 20 inches in the theorem, it, it told me it calculated this at 52 inches as the length of my truss. Now just remember, though, that if you want your truss, to, that'll take you right to the edge of your structure. If you want your, your truss to overhang at all, you need to add that on to uh, the measurement you get as a result of running that theorem, that formula. So in my case, the 52 inches takes me right to the edge of the structure. I want to overhang an extra six inches. So I cut my board at, at 58 inches, but at the correct angle. <laughs> the, the first mistake I did, and, and logically it doesn't make any sense, I just wasn't careful, is I cut it, I cut it this way. And so I ruined a piece of lumber. It was, it was cut the right angle, just the wrong way. So just be really careful and double check. And that was just because I had the board sitting on the wrong side than what I was thinking. And I was, I just went too fast and I didn't double check my work. So be careful on that. And one other time, silly mistake I made, you can see um, here, I drew the notch, the rabbit ear, whatever you call it here on the wrong side of the board. Luckily I didn't cut it. <laughs> you know, I, I caught that before I did it. So, um, just be really careful, get your two that are correct. Once you know they're correct, you know, fasten them together, set them on top of your structure, make sure they actually are correct, that they fit like they're supposed to. Once you know they're correct and they're identical to each other, then you can use one of them um, as a duplicate or as a pattern to, to do all the rest of them. And then the rest of them are really, really fast. Okay, I wanted to talk just a quick second about how you figure out where all of your rafters go, your trusses, as far as spacing them properly so they end up, uh, you know, correct when you're all done. Um, there's a video that, uh, the one that was the most helpful to me, I forget the name of it, but I'll put a link to it below the description of this video um, that teaches you how to, how to do that. I'm going to take the... Uh, the camera off the tripod and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through and show you uh, the simple method that that I use to do it okay to do this you're gonna need a little bit of if, if your rafters are are two inches wide or really an inch and a half if they're two by four material or two by six or something like that then what you'll want is a piece of material that's half the thickness of the rafter material so this is a one by, a little one by uh, two. So what you want to do is you want to, when, when you're measuring out the length of the roof to mark the spots, I've already put the roof on there so I can't really do a demonstration. But basically what I did um, is I, you can see I got screw holes in the board there. I just screwed this little piece of one by right at the top of my structure there 
so that I could stick a tape measure on the end and measure, uh, you know, three quarters inch farther than the edge of my structure. So what that does, if you measure, if your tape measure starts three quarters inches farther than your structure, as you measure two feet, you know, every two feet down the 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 wall, um, it it lands your mark in the middle of where your rafter is going to be. So every twenty, every two feet, there's a mark, and and you know that's where the middle of your rafter is going to be. Now, in that video, it talked about how you want to make your first uh, your first section, but you make your first section slightly shorter, and then the rest of them will work all correctly every two feet all the way down. Okay, so this is what the uh, chicken coop and run is uh, looking like as we're wrapping up this video. It's getting really close to being done. A uh, few things I'll point out that I still got to do that'll be in the next video. I've got to uh, obviously put the plywood ends, paint them white on both ends of that. I've got to put the, the ladder for the chickens to get up. I've got to put some covers that I can... Uh, take on and off to block the wind in the winter for the windows. Um, you can see the roof, it looks, I think it came together pretty nice. Um, the nesting box, I really like how this, uh, this door's gonna work. I've, I'm gonna put dividers, a couple of dividers in there that I can take out if I want to. So that's how that did, is looking. Oh, and I put the the roof on on the that to protect it. Uh, back here, this is what the coop's looking like. Um, I really am happy with how it how it's all come together. Um, this door is done, um, the deep litter door, and uh, I've I've got the other doors built. I've even got the plywood for the the other the inner doors painted. So I've got both the doors built. I just got to get the plywood on it and get them hung. So that'll be in the next video. That will be quick and easy. Um, the main thing that's going to be in the next video is right here. I'm going to have uh, I'm going to build a feeder that's similar to the feeders that if you saw in my previous videos that I put in the two quail hutches that I built. Um, it's going to hold at least at least one 50 pound bag of feed. It will probably probably a lot more than that so I won't have to feed them very often and they'll be able to to eat all they want they won't be able to waste any of the food anyway if you're interested in that that'll be something to watch in the future okay well I hope that was interesting I appreciate you watching the video all the way to the end thanks so much we'll talk to you in the next video